Hello everybody, this is a Lamley Showcase. Once again, making up for a little bit of lost time as I've been traveling the last couple of weeks with uh, very little time to do videos. These Target uh, Hot Wheels Car Culture Target exclusive two packs showed up while I was gone. And I definitely wanna showcase these because this is more about not just the models that you're finding in Targets, if you've been lucky enough to find them, but it's also about kind of the history of these, especially this one. So I've got some cool stuff to show you if you haven't had any perspective on, on some of these at least. So this is very, very cool. We're going back quite a few years and this is gonna be neat. Anyway, let's get right to it. Very excited to open these up. I'm gonna start, I think there's a theme for these two packs and it seems to be like making up for a little bit. Usually in these two packs, there's one car that is a repeat essentially. And in most cases, like a full on repeat, there's hardly anything different about them. Maybe a slight shade or something that really isn't on purpose. Um, but it appears to me that all of these are slightly the repeat model. Well, there's no repeat in this one. There's a repeat in this one and there's appears to be a repeat in this one. Um, but I don't know if they're all really the same. So it's kind of nice to see some fresh stuff from these. So this is the first set. This is Lamborghini. There's no official name on these, right? But this is the Lamborghini Aventador Coupe or Coupe and the Lamborghini Huracan LP 610-4. You turn this around. There are all the models. If you haven't found it and you want to find it in your target, there's that for you. But let's just go ahead. Oh, and there's Julian's artwork, which is really, really cool. Let's go ahead and just open this up. Kind of, it's still kind of a funny packaging. Um, they've put the background and made it a little bit better. Move that off to the side, move that off to the side, open this, and basically just roll these out. So. Let's talk about the Huracan in a second. This is where I think there might be some real makeup because this is the Aventador. It's a cool casting, but I brought out two to kind of compare. And there's been several, I think it's been in premium a little bit. It's been in basic mostly, we're starting to rain again, but let's see if we get through this. But here's what I'm talking about. Now this one obviously is a different shade. This was from Fast and Furious, I think. And look at this disaster where they put these thin rims on the back, which really didn't fit this casting and this Fast and Furious. I mean, it was just terrible. And there was no one. I mean, I think even Hot Wheels was like, yeah, we kind of blew that one. I don't know if they didn't have the wide wheels at the factory, but you just don't release this. It just looks like it looks like a spare tire on the back or something. I mean, it just was a disaster. So that, that's not necessarily the makeup that I'm talking about. But in terms of the five spoke wheels, We've got five spokes on the silver one, but on the five spoke wheels, that's what I'm talking about. So we're gonna put that off to the side. I think this is technically a repeat of this one, which, which was from Entertainment. And it was, I believe, Bruce Wayne's Lamborghini from Batman, right? I think that's what this replica actually was from Entertainment. And if I put the two together, the shade is different. I, but it does appear that the design is essentially the same. The, the Lamborghini badge seems to be a little bit different. Let's see the back. Yeah, even the tail lights are done a little bit more, a little bit different. But the big difference is this used, I'm trying to keep this in focus. I've got the overcast lighting here. This used those GT wheels, which didn't look great. Um, didn't really fit the casting. This one has the five spokes and they're nice and wide. And it just, while well, maybe the deep barrel doesn't work on a Lamborghini per se, at least it looks a lot more balanced. And for the Aventador, which hasn't had a great run in premium, this is very, very nice to see. So there is the first one. This might be a little bit of a long-winded video, but hopefully you like it. Um, there is the first Lamborghini. The second one is the Huracan. Now this one has had, and speaking of Lamborghinis in premium, this one has had an incredibly cool run. Let's looked fantastic in premium, starting with the Doctor Strange version from Entertainment. Nice and clean, gunmetal gray. Chrome, they didn't have the five spokes or the 10 spokes at the time. So they did the, those TE37 inspired six spokes and um, no, the, yeah, six spokes in Chrome, which looks so cool. This is already a great version was this uh, Batman version or no, not Batman, Doctor Strange. Then we had it in entertainment again in Forza, the lace wheels, mixed opinions on those. Uh, but it looked kind of cool with the Forza Deco, but that's not what the really one I'm talking about. I think the clean ones are Doctor Strange, this Fours is nice, but then in the Exotic Envy from, was it last year? This bright green, which 
totally fits on a Lamborghini with the chrome five spokes is just I mean to me it's near perfection for a Lamborghini these bright colors really work on a casting like this I don't know if that will, version will ever be beat I just kind of gave up on even trying to collect the basic or didn't, didn't want the basic because the premium was so cool and this blue with the chrome 10 spokes now you add that to the Doctor Strange Gray and the Exotic Envy Green and this blue 10 spoke is just fabulous and a perfect, it's good on its own. It's even better mixed with the, uh, especially the other two, the gray and the green. That is a huge winner for me from this pack. I really like those Lamborghinis. All right, let's get to the next one. Euro racing is clearly like group five kind of styling here. Again, there's no exact theme. It doesn't say it, but uh, this is the BMW M1 Pro Car and the Lancia Stratos group five. Art looks very, very cool. Let's open this up. If I can. All right, let's start with the Stratos. Stratus, Stratos. Boulevard is where this one debuted. This is the actual debut of the casting. And it debuted with those Japanese four spokes, which we were like, eh, I don't know if that really, really works. And it doesn't bother me. I think it kind of fit the era of the car. Not totally accurate, but they've made up more than made up for it with this version. Again, the deep barrel doesn't totally work, but these are the wheels that they used. Probably debuted on the, R, uh, on the RWB, right? When they did the RWB, so you got the small. They've now they now can do the small six spoke. I think it was that was probably the reason because the only small wheel they had that fit for real riders was that four spoke. So that's what they had to do. But now they have this uh, TE thirty seven um, six spoke that uh, that works perfectly. They have to go with the with the deep barrel, but I think that works. So now those are you got two totally not totally two slightly different versions of the Lancia Pro Car. Had to bring those out. There's only been three other versions prior to oh. I can just throw this one in here. That We got those wheels in, what was this, Team Transport, right? I believe this was Team Transport. So they've made these wheels. You saw it in Team Transport, then they brought it back for the other one. Kind of kind of botched the narrative there, but now we got it figured out. All right, let's go back to the M1 Pro Car. First version, These it has been a while. We saw this uh, in the very first year of car culture, right, was the M1, which looks really nice, the Pro Car. Uh, in obviously BMW racing colors that one makes perfect sense and then we had it in the project cars series that was in in uh, this was uh, car culture as well with project cars you got this uh, black version with the kind of that rainbow striping which is very cool and then the one I don't think I'm missing one the only other one here is uh, the get weird uh, anti-social social club version in the white polka dots which was obviously uh you could only get through anti-social social club on their site sold out in about six six seconds of course like everything does um, but this is the one version you can get there put that right there and now we have what i think might be the best version is this modal release which they've done nicely because you have that wraparound striping from the front to the or from sorry from the back and then around the side to the hood and down the other side I think this looks really, really good. Notice there's a couple of paint chips on the spoiler. That's the problem with these metal spoilers sometimes. They get uh, they get beat up. I'm going to have to find another one. That's a bummer, um, seeing the paint chips on the spoiler. But you get that risk. You know, you wish you didn't see that, but sometimes it happens. But that's very cool. I really like the wheels on this one. Love the deco on it. So much so that, yeah, I want one with, uh, with perfect. I'm going to have to go out and find myself one, pick that up. All right. That is that when it comes to this one. Now, let's go a little bit deeper. This is the one that I think is very, very cool. And if there had to be a theme for this, I would have to say vintage racing is what this one looks. And I love the vintage racing series. It was a, what, one year? It was 30 something. No, was it 30? Yeah, I think it was 30 cars. It's become a thing of legend. And it seems like this is a somewhat of a continuation of those like stock car, um, you know, the vintage racing obviously had the BRE and had some other styles. And then they had the drag strip demons, which are obviously, you know, uh, straightaway drag cars. And then they've had a couple other racing themes. But this one, this stock car style was really heavy. Trans Am stock car was real heavy in vintage racing. 
And it seems like that's what they're going for with the 69 Ford Torino Talladega and the 66 Chevelle. Both of these castings, it has been a while. We haven't seen either of them in car culture, team transport, anything. We've seen some castings like the Galaxy show up and other things. But it's really nice to see both these castings. And they're not repeats. So they've given us two brand new versions of both castings. Julian's artwork is fantastic. Makes perfect sense to be on the race, on a racetrack. I just think this one, I mean, far and away, and this is one of the best two packs I think they've done, especially since we don't have the repeats on these. But let's do a little... Now, both of these castings, well, there's been more versions of the 69 Ford Torino Talladega, but the, what I want to focus on are the two premiums. I, there, there was, it was a super treasure hunt at one time. I don't have that. It was a very good version um, done in a stock car racing style. The two I have are from Vintage Racing, and you guys will have to let me know if there's been others in premium. Like I said, it's been in basic and several stripes, but nothing like the two Vintage Racing, which are done in this stock car style. The first one was this. These, are, these have become very expensive and very uh, very difficult to acquire. At least you have to pay a lot of money to acquire. And this first one's number 11, AJ Foyt. Most of the Vintage Racing, not all, were based on real race cars, and the decos were done in that, you know, obviously Vintage Racing style, which looks so good. Love the real riders on this, the deep steelies. Love the clean deco. You know, the, the vintage styling was always a little, it looked a little more hand painted. It looked a little more simple. And, uh, and this definitely works, um, this vintage racing version. And then the other one, I don't even have to say what it was. You just look at the color. Well, maybe you, some of you young folk might think um, whoever the character was that was uh, Richard Petty's character on Cars. But no, this is Petty's. Uh, Torino Talladega and they did three they did a Roadrunner they did the uh, Superbird right in this uh, in this Richard Petty blue number 43 and this was the Torino Talladega which you know I think it's one of the most expensive vintage racing cars now this is one of the ones that I had to really kind of push to find and uh, you know the story of vintage racing and I've told it before is that you know it didn't do as well as they had hoped and the later mixes were harder to get this was part of that and it was very hard to uh, it's very difficult to acquire now, but I'm very happy to have it. And now we have this one, Talladega or Bus. This might be, I'm not sure, has Manson's name on it. Goodyear on the tires, which is really just, it's such an important part of these cars is to have some sort of logo on the tires. I think that look is really important for stock car and for racing. I think this is a uh, a an unlicensed um, fantasy deco, if you will, but... With the red and the white and the blue and the way the number 25 and the way that the fonts are, it looks very much vintage. It looks very much retro. The red wheels, the red hubs on this are so well done. And I just, and the 25 on the front, the headlights, super cool as well. I just think this thing's really, really perfectly done. Um, and it has that vintage. Nothing too modern for the look of this one. And just a great addition to that Torino Talladega family. All right, let's talk about the Chevelle. This one has not been in basic. It has only been in premium and it has the same heritage. Started in vintage racing and then we've seen it here and there ever since. So let's talk through that. The first version is the best version by about 8 billion miles and it is the uh, Chevelle. Uh, the number 13, there was the Camaro and they're both in this done in this deco with this gold top and the black striping. I do like the low profile of this uh, of this Chevelle. Only one time in vintage racing in this classic. Now it's another one that's been very difficult to get. Then we saw it in the Hot Wheels Racing Series, which, you know, the Greenwood debuted there. Um, we had a few other cool castings that came out of that series. And this one, again, I don't know if this was based on an actual car, but with the yellow reel riders, the two-tone, 266 yellow and blue, everything looks perfect. It has that vintage feel to it which I thought was really nice in that uh, stock car series, right? I think it was stock car from the racing series. And then we saw it in Boulevard, the original Boulevard. This deco's okay. Not as fond of it as I am the other decos, but it has that Hoosier and some other, um, some other decos there. It has the uh, Moon Eyes disc wheels on it. Racing deco's fine. Not as fond as this one, of this one as I am the others, but it's still very nice but not nearly what the other two. And then surprisingly, it was the finale model at one of the conventions a few years ago. This was a surprise. 
it's clean. It doesn't have a racing look, but it's very sleek and it plays nicely off of the lines of the casting. The five spoke reel riders are kind of cool for this one. Yeah, it doesn't have the uh, that stock car racing look, but I think it's a very, very cool model and one of the more underrated convention models. This is from the 31st convention. So that's maybe about four years ago, five years ago, something like that. But uh, I always thought this one was very, very nice. And now we go back to that vintage racing heritage. Again, I don't know if this is a real version. Bubba's bearings, I don't think it is. Billy's car insurance, but at least the Hot Wheels design team whether that's Van, uh, who did it, or whoever, I don't know who did the, who did this particular deco, but they stayed true to that stock car, kind of vintage retro look um, that makes perfect sense on this. I am so happy to have this casting back. You got the Eagle Goodyear tires on it, that deco, which is very, very nice. This thing, and I love the color combination. It's fantastic, and I am stoked to have that model back and maybe we'll see it again. Maybe we'll start seeing it in uh, car culture and some others because it's a very deserving casting. Uh, it's very detailed, very well done. Like the Ford Galaxy, it was the 66 Galaxy that they did that we've seen in a few different series. Um, perfect premium, don't move it to basic, just keep it in premium. And as you do more of these American vintage cars, that's a perfect one, you know, as they explore more stock car. I hope they do, because that one looks really good. You guys tell me what you think. Very, very cool set of two packs. Love the fact that all of the cars there's not, they're not perfect repeats, that there's something fresh about each one of these releases and a nice heritage there. Real happy with this set. Thanks everybody. Bye.